All right, guys, I'm just going to do a short video on this um, tonight. Uh, you may be wondering why I picked that beginning. I know the pictures really don't uh, go with what we're um, doing with here, but I like the beginning. Um, knowledge is power. Um, they're using, you know, informational warfare against us. Uh, and I do believe is if we all stand together, I think we can, you know, expose this for what it is. Uh, like I said, the, the photos didn't match, I know, but it, it's just the, the wording on it just seemed perfect because, you know, the smarter you, you can, the more you know about a subject, um, the better it is because they don't want you to learn about stuff. They want you to listen to what, you know, they say and they hope you believe them. So, that's why I picked that beginning. Like I said, it, it was kind of different, but it, I think the wording is what was almost perfect because this this is what we need. We need knowledge, um, you know, research. There's so much stuff coming out, and they are still denying stuff. Totally. All right. This was earlier today. Um, you know, EPA had to do a big. They had shut Main Street down. Okay. I don't know why. Just big. I call this a photo op opportunity. Okay, Ex exactly what I call this. Um, there was no need to do this. Uh, none at all. This is just a photo op. But I want you to listen to what this is. The um, EPA administrator. Um, I want you to listen to what he says, and this kind of tells you. You know, maybe what's more than what there's more going on than what we're being told, which we know that, but you know, they're they're slowly letting it out because um things they say, I catch on to things they say. Um uh, and you know, you, you start piecing you know, pieces together slowly of what comes out at each one of these press conferences and stuff and it's it's starting to uh show it trend i guess um but i i just found this very interesting administrator let me ask you real quick would you allow your children to touch the water we've seen the rainbow sheen we've seen you know all these chemicals popping up from the bottom of the streams that these kids used to play in would you allow your kids anywhere close to these streams right now i, I would not i'm a father of a nine-year-old uh, i think we have to all agree that we wish this accident didn't occur uh, the accident occurred and as a result, some of our uh, creeks and our streams have pollution in them. Administrator, let me ask you real quick. Some of them. Um, there's a pretty big list of uh, polluted creeks, streams, rivers right now. But I find it interesting. Uh, you, you know, we got families, houses living beside this um, stream that runs through town. Uh, goes, cuts down past the park and then goes into the woods and, uh, I forget what streamer runs into. Um, you know, he wouldn't bring his kid here, but it's okay for you to have to have your kid here. See, you get what I'm saying? Um, you know, it was up to him, you know, he... He's, his kid isn't staying here. No, he would never bring his kid here. But we expect you to have your kid here, or your kids here, or you yourself here, um, why all this, you know, pollution, contamination, you know, irrigation. Well, we do all this so you can just breathe it right back in again, you know. I just don't get it, but whatever. I want you to listen to this guy. Um, remember how they called this a, you know, a controlled release or a controlled burn, which I call bullcrap on. Um, and this guy makes some uh, really good points. I found this a while ago, and I forgot to add this into uh, one of my videos. I did come across it again today while I was just throwing some quick stuff together. Um, and... I find this interesting because we've we've heard a lot of a of chemical scientists and you know people that mess with that has dealt with these chemicals and know about these chemicals and stuff spoke out spoke out speak out against this. Um, 
but they yet they still continue to imply that it was what was needed to happen. You were the guy that made all the decisions. You got a control burn. Well, there's the lie. It wasn't a control burn. It was an uncontrolled burn. See, I'm a chemical engineer as well as well as a top health and safety guy. I've got undergraduate and graduate degrees in chemical engineering. You're the first actual expert that we've gotten to speak to. In your opinion, why do you believe that it was an uncontrolled burn? Why are you using that terminology when so far everywhere else we've seen that it was a controlled burn? You could go to a place called West Liverpool downriver, and that's where they burn hazardous waste. And in a hazardous waste uh, situation, they very carefully control the temperature and the amount of oxygen so that they get complete combustion, right? It's time, temperature, and, and amount of the air fuel ratio. There's no controlling of the amount of air that gets in there. That's why you saw all that soot. So it's not a controlled burn because a controlled burn would have to be like in a furnace or in your car or some system where you control the fuel and in other words, the vinyl chloride and the amount of oxygen. So they didn't do that. So it's an uncontrolled burn. One of the worst ways to um, determine exposure in general is to smell it because if you smell the odor, guess what? You're already exposed, right? How long have you been doing this? Um, 30 years. I'm in most of the big named lawsuits as an exposure expert. It's a privilege I get called in to try to figure some of this stuff out. So that's my job always is what really happened, you know. There you go. If you're able to smell it, you're already exposed to it. I love that when people speak out against this. Um, just like... <laughs> Somebody from the EPA the other uh, day, um, one of the press conferences they had, and the decision to make this, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to call it what it is. We just, you know, you just blew up tankers, okay? Exactly what you did. Um, the decision to make that, she stated, was made by city officials and... Um, I would. T she said experts. So I would take it. It would be the railroad experts. Um, I don't want to say this because I, I. I don't want to place brand blame on anybody. But did the city officials make the determination just out of what they were told by the so-called experts? Or, you know, did they actually see this for themselves? Maybe photos. Um, I'm sure they didn't go down there, but photos, videos of, hey, this is what's happening. You know, this is, we have, this is, we have video and this is what, you know, is happening here. And, you know, I would like to know that because until you show me and probably many other people in town, um, some kind of evidence that what you did was, a was safer than having uh one tanker uh explode i'm i'm going to say you blew it up as a cheap way to dispose of all the chemicals um i've had many talks with there's many things they could have done with that there um some kind of i forget what you call it some kind of cooling mats or something um there was also a thing that uh, they uh, called off the unmanned water water cannons they had going to cool this because they said it it wasn't effective. Well, as soon as you take the cold water away from you know what's cooling it down, what do you think is going to happen to the temperature? Um, I think you know it's, it's going to go up. So, um, who called for them to be removed? No, it's another question. But I lo I love when we have guys like this to speak out. I mean, this this is wonderful. He's been doing this for thirty years, and he's willing to you know speak out about this and tell you know tell the truth. It wasn't no controlled burn. It was uncontrolled burn. Exactly. They are doing sediment washing of the creeks now. Um, they're trying to get all that. Uh, deposits off the bottom of the creek. You know, when you throw rocks in, you get the rainbow. Um, I have been noticing the creeks have been uh, running, like, very muddy-looking. Um, so, 
and I see this was released. This was released yesterday, and this would be why. Uh, because they're basically taking a high pressure hose and spraying the bottom of the creek to try to get some of that stuff that's you know that sank to the bottom uh, to ra to to um, raise up, and then they're supposedly uh, sucking up with vac um, vac tanks, vacuum trucks. So that would explain the dirty water. Um, I went farther down the creek today because we had a good amount of rain yesterday. Uh, but it was just, it was higher than it would normally was. And like I said, it was dirtier than it normally was. So I really couldn't get, you know, it was flowing so fast that I really couldn't tell, um, you know, by putting stuff in there. If, you know, any sediment or anything came to the top. So hopefully that slows down a little bit. Um, I'm going to try again tomorrow to go down there. Uh, I was also asked about if, uh, about deer dying. Um, I personally haven't seen no dead deer. Uh, if, no, if you, if you do find one, I, you really can't, I mean, this would be your first, um, you know, thing to go to that he, the deer probably drank the water and probably died. But I mean, there's many things that kill deer, um, unless that deer would be taken in and, uh, you know, a was it necropsy, whatever you call it, when they um basically tear it apart and figure out why it died. Um, unless you would have that done, I guess you know it's kind of up in the air. It's like the bird I seen. You know, I I seen one dead bird. Um, could the bird died from the air? I don't know. Could a bird die because he was died because he was old or you know? Some other thing, yeah, you know, could have. So there's a lot of ifs in that, unless you would, you know, take it in and had it, have it, you know, checked and seen. So it's, you know, it's kind. Of, it's, I see them things, them claims being put out there, and um, like sort of videos being put out there of them. But unless you take it in and have it physically, you know, checked out, uh, you know, it, it really doesn't hold no ground to if it died of poisoning or not. So. I have a couple people ask me about that today, about if I heard about the deer, and I haven't, and I looked it up. Um, like I said, with, without taking it in, it's it's kind of up in the air because you know animals die all you know all the time. So, uh, what else are we going into? This really, really, really excited me. Um, I was I was so excited to see this uh, on. Facebook. Um, this kind of gives me hope that my standing out there uh, with my sign is maybe giving more people hope to come out. Um, this is they want to organize a peaceful protest, which I agree. It, you know, make it peaceful. I don't want no burning, no, you know, the crap that happened years ago. Um, they would like it for us to be able to get answers we're not getting, like testing for, for dioxins. Um, I totally agree with this. Um, I hope this comes together. I really hope this comes together, and I will be a key factor in trying to pull this together. Um, we have people that comment on this. They're even out of town and willing to come in to stand up for residents. Um, in East Palestine, Negley, Darlington, um, you know, the whole affected region. Um, so I, I, when I seen this today, th this really excited me because, it's, you know, it kind of showed me maybe, you know, maybe I am kind of getting people to think now. Um, maybe it might not even be me. Maybe just they're fed up and they just want to do it. But, you know, it just kind of makes me feel a little better when I stand out there and then I see a post like this. Um, you know, them wanting to organize something because, you know, I think if we get a big crowd in this town, um, I think it, there might be more answers, uh, you know, or at least more stuff that comes out when they realize that people ain't going to sit back and, you know, listen to their scripted answers and stuff. So I will keep you updated on this. Definitely. I've, I'm following this. Um, 
I said, I hope this gets pulled together. I would love it. Um, it would be great. You know, they think one person's bad until well, you have, you know, a lot of people. So, and this is even, this, this even goes back to, I'm going to get on this too. Um, when I was handing out water yesterday, okay, after uh, the interview with the, what, what was the dude? Well, I actually met him the, uh, the day before when America was Americans for America or America for Americans. I'm sorry, guys, if I, it's one of them too. Um, when they were dropping their supplies off, um, I decided I was going to walk through town. I actually met this guy. Uh, he was giving out water. I'm so glad I met him because uh, we just automatically, you know, just started talking. Uh, and he was telling me, you know, what he was about. And you guys, it's on my live stream. I'll, I'll cut that clip out because so you guys don't have to watch the whole two hours to find it. Um, I'll, I'll clip it. Um, his first interview he gave me, but it was nice to, you know, cause we, we kind of just clicked and, uh, he seemed like a great guy. Everybody there was great. So, you know, I went down the following day cause, uh, the big shot was flying in. Um, they made fun of him cause he was supposed to be there <laughs> the day before and he showed up like 14 hours late. Uh, they didn't let him, let him live that down, uh, Sunday, but I mean, we had a great time. Uh, you know, I he asked me, you know, if, if to come back to, you know, to get an interview with both of them, which, you know, okay. But then, you know, I didn't just want to be down there to get an interview. Um, I decided, you know, hey, I'm going to stand out there with the sign. It was raining. It was cold. You know, I would admit, <laughs> I, seen my, I seen the picture of me. Um, I look like I'm miserable. And that was towards the end because I was soaked. My hands were frozen. Um, my sign was falling apart. <laughs> so, but we spoke to a business owner. Um, I'm not going to place to uh, put it out there because they don't want to be out there. But the, you know what the saddest thing was? Um, they wanted to get their story out there. But the reason why they won't get their story out there or they won't say their story because they're afraid to be run out of town. I mean, th that is just ridiculous. It, you can't speak up and say, you know, what you, you know, what you're feeling, what what this has done to your business, um, without the threat of being, you know, either people just not doing business with you anymore, or you being run out of town by you know city council. Um, it, it's sad. Uh, there was also another a video. That I have, I haven't posted yet, because um, I was debating on posting posting it. It was of a woman. Uh, she is, I'm gonna say, uh, cousin. I, I could be wrong. Um, I think John's cousin. I, I don't know. He he knew her somehow, but she, she lives on the other side of the tracks. Um, like close to the tracks and you know th this is like many interview one well, not really interviews people i talk to because like a lot of people don't want to talk on camera just for that simple fact they're afraid to talk on camera um i will give her that um i think it was fox news i think it was fox that came up and did an interview with her um she agreed to an interview and i did record it i haven't posted it yet um i don't know if it was put on fox or not but you know, to hear her tell her story, just like many other stories um, I've heard people tell, um, they still tug at your heart um, really bad. Um, she was getting emotional there towards the end. It's, you know, no matter how many times I hear them stories from individuals, um, you feel what they're going through. Uh, you know, the worrying... You know, the EPA not putting out or testing what they're supposed to be testing for or putting out the truth of, you know, air quality readings. Um, they'll put out what they want you to know, but, you know, is it the truth? But it, 
you know, that's what the one guy was saying. The guy was saying, like, he's like, I almost teared up when I was listening to her. And I was like, yeah, I've heard so many stories from so many residents like that, that they do. They, they almost make you tear up because you, you can almost feel for them what they're going through. I mean, the same thing with like when they're getting donations, I don't film them because I feel that is a personal thing. You know, they're getting donations. Some people don't want to be filmed getting donations because some people are, you know, don't want to be looked as looked upon as, oh, they're getting help. They're taking advantage of this. Um, you know, they're just getting free stuff. I, I've seen that posted a lot on um, thing. You guys are just wanting free stuff. That's why you're doing this. Um, no, they're they're doing this so they can live. You know, and, and I respect that, and I don't film, uh, you know, people getting donations. Uh, it's, it's just, I don't, I'm in the background, I'm not up in the car, up in the face, you know, see what they're getting. I don't do that. Um, and it has gained me, and it, it's, I've gained a lot of respect from the community from that, too. So, uh, like I said, you got you to know how to talk to these people. Um, you got to know what they're going through. Anyways, we'll get on to the next thing. I don't. I didn't want this video to be too long. It's probably gonna be long. Um, EPA is not testing for dioxins because the si scientists calls the reason lame. <laughs> well, do you think maybe they're not testing for for dioxins because you know they're gonna find some? <laughs> you know, it was a lame excuse and wrong. So they said later on they might. Um, but as of now, they're not doing it right now. Why? Because you're going to find some. Um, you know, I, I like how you, they've rented out empty storefronts in town. They have this community health center, which is a total fucking load of, oh, I don't want to just be a swear thing. Total freaking load of crap. Um, they don't do blood work. You know, you basically just go in and maybe tell them what's wrong and they give you a, you know, a scripted response. and. That's it. Uh, I don't even know why they even have it. It's for optics is what it is. Uh, I've seen this a lot too, and this has finally been uh, confirmed. Uh, I've seen a lot of people posting they've been diagnosed with chemical bronchitis, and it actually is um, a diagnosis. It's uh, basically you get a you get a burning sensation. Basically, your your throat is is basically chemically burned. Um, you know, it, it burns when you breathe, you know, and, you know, I've heard people, they go away, um, and this, you know, goes away there. Some of their symptoms go away, but as soon as they come back in town, this, their symptoms come back. Um, but I'd like to see they actually, you know, wrote about this cause this is an actual thing. Um, you can actually have chemical bronchitis. So. And I've seen kids have be posted to having this. Um, I seen a post today that a woman took her kid to the doctor, and she had uh, a, she was I think it was a skin rash or some problem, and the doctor diagnosed her with it was dermatitis due to chemical exposure. You know, so I'm glad they finally put this out there. Uh, I didn't want to put it out there because you know I really didn't have. No proof of it, but you know they put it out, and as as I read the article into it, uh, you know it is a real thing. Um, they had it. They haven't posted the minutes from this council meeting. Um, I think I'm gonna uh, attend the next one. Um, I'll warn you now. Uh, no, I'm not, I'm not gonna film or nothing. Um, I'm just gonna take notes, but. Cause I don't think they allow, they should allow filming, but I won't. Um, I just want notes. Um, now they're supposed to be rebuilding the tracks March 5th. I see a, uh, one of the law firm companies, um, requested the, the judge not let them take away the, uh, tank cars and destroy them because they're destroying evidence. They were supposed to start doing that tomorrow. Uh, I'll be down that way tomorrow unless I read unless I read otherwise that the judge put a hold on all that and won't let them tank cars be uh, hauled out of there. So I haven't heard nothing yet. Um, 
let's see, the, the, this, the mud in the streets and stuff ain't contaminated. Um, it, it's just mud from the trucks driving through. Well, if you've seen the video that I played of the water runoff the other day when with the rain, um, you know, it looked kind of, you know, rainbow. It looked like a rainbow water to me, so, but, um, let's see here. Testing the water every Tuesday. Before, they only tested it once every three months, which I know they used to put a sheet out um, when they tested it. Uh, a water leak contamination would be the only cause for concern. Um, the closest water line to the railway is 200 yards away. 200 yards ain't very far. Um, and <laughs> we've seen... <laughs> and there seems to be a lot of um, water rain breaks in this town. Uh, so... They haven't posted the meeting, but uh, I see they're saying the company, okay, Norfolk Southern, um, invested eleven point three five million into the recovery to date, okay, and they did an itemized list, itemized list, okay. And this is what really pisses me off, and this is what I'm going to. This pisses me off even more, okay. They reimbursed and committed to the East Palestine Fire Department approximately two point. Eight seven million dollars for fire equipment used in the derailment response. Two point eight seven million, and that's not including the where's this? They they provided two hundred twenty thousand dollars for them to replace their um, self-contained breathing apparatus. So, almost three million dollars has went to the fire department. That's that's just unbelievable, totally unbelievable. You can't decontaminate stuff, and you know, Chief. When I get you out next time, and I'm going to ask you this question: Where's this money going? No, I was like uh, the one million mark kind of got to me, but now when I see, I mean, this was updated today: two point eight seven million dollars. Is that just for equipment? Is does that include your your firefighters' health risks that they took? Um, maybe future health costs. I don't know. They don't itemize it like that. Three million dollars in fire department. You know what they could do? You know, to help communities, the people in this community, they give you a measly freaking thousand dollars for inconvenience fee. They're no longer paying for hotels for people that won't come back to their house. That they're afraid to come back to their house. Um, the one lady, what, it's been three weeks since the derailment. Um, she came, she put a request in to have her air quality tested. And they were so behind that she came home and it was in her house three days before they came and tested her air quality. Well, you know, she just breathed all that stuff in for three days if there was something in there. Um, uh, we know they donated three hundred thousand dollars to the school. Uh, they funded administrative support service for the East Palestine Fire Department. Um, they purchased they purchased a hundred floor regions from a local florist to replace lost business. Uh, the arrangements are going to the residents of a local nursing home and assisted living facility. No. That's good. Um, I thought there was two florists in town. Um, but it says the only person, it said just from a local floor. So was it just one or did you, did you purchase from both? Because it's, you know, you should, should do both because just to be fair. But let's see here. Uh, they contracted a local landscaper to replace the mulch at the East Palestine School. East Palestine Elementary School playground um, expected to be completed by March 6th. Um, why is mulch contaminated? Um, is there a prize? Could there be, you know, a chance it is? Yeah. Let's see here. They provided coach buses to the high school basketball team to their playoff games in Perry. Um, Use local vendor to create signs and coordinate with East Palestine Fire and Police Departments to see the team out of town. No, all in all, that, that, that's, you know, used a local sign creator. Great. Um, 
but I don't get how that helps the community. But um, like this, they delivered twelve hundred, twelve twenty, uh, they delivered an additional twenty twenty one palates <laughs> of water to the community. Um, they created a community license position and hired a local NS employee and an East Palestine resident to gather community input from residents and local businesses to oversee the distribution of $1 million. Um, they del delivered another additional 19 pallets of water to, community, to the community. Uh, they established a $1 million community fund to support immediate community needs in East Palestine. Uh, they coordinated and funded cleaning and air monitoring services for the East Palestine and Mount Elementary and High Schools. So that means they did pay. For, they did pay for the, um, I guess, the ventilation cleaning. I guess I take it from that statement. Um, they provided more than 100 air purifiers for residents to use in their home. Um, we already said they $220,000 for the um, SCBAs. They purchased a case of. Oh, purchased cases of water from a local vendor for community distribution, and they donated $25,000 to American Red Cross Disaster Relief Fund to provide immediate support for, for day one shelters. This is their, um, their list they put out. So, I don't know how you guys all feel about this, but, you know, the, the thing gets me is the very top one. Three million dollars to the fire department. Three million. And your health's worth what? Thousand dollars. Because they paid well, they paid for hotel rooms, but doesn't you know, that's not money you get to keep. You've already shelled that out, so thousand dollars. That's what you're that's what your health is worth. A thousand dollars. We're sorry to inconvenience you. Here, here's a thousand dollars. But yet, you know, I'm, I'm sure this ain't, you know, everything. I know this ain't everything. Um, there's probably some not kind of some maybe some side stuff they did, um, gave out, but I don't have proof of it, so I can't say for sure. Um, that's just my, that's just my thoughts on that. Uh. Other than that, I think that's all I wanted to cover here. Yeah, it, was, it was just a quick um, go through some articles I found. Um, it said tomorrow I will look and see if uh, I don't know if it said I don't know if that judge put the hold on that or not. Um, if they are hauling them out, I will be down at the PA side tomorrow to cover that. Um, I went to hit the creek again. And hopefully it's, uh, you know, cleared up enough. Uh, I may take, may a little, take a little nature walk too. I don't know. See if I can find anything, you know, dead or something. Um, I may head down on, I want to do so much stuff tomorrow, but I don't have so much time tomorrow. So, um, I, I, I would like to head down to Negley, um, these people that were handing out water in East Palestine also had um, gave water and cleaning supplies to Negley to hand out, which is great. Um, they're they got seven. What do you say? Seven more pallets coming in this for this weekend. Um, they want to start branching out into different communities, like um, you know, Darlington. You know, oh, I forget what he said. You know, the surrounding communities, too, just, you know, not focus on East Palestine because East Palestine is getting a lot of water. Um, there may be towns not getting quite so much. So they want to kind of um, branch it out and, you know, serve them communities also, which I think is a great thing. You know, Rogers, Rogers is another one um, that's, that's a close town near here. Uh, so um, I will I will be with, down there with them um, next weekend. Uh we have that town meeting Thursday I will be at. Uh, the 13th is the next uh, council meeting. I will be at that. I won't stream or nothing. I'm just going to take notes. Um, and I, I think that's it so far. 
Um, I'm probably forgetting something, but that's just off the top of my head and what I can remember. So um, I'll keep you guys updated on what goes on here. Um, it seems to me more people's waking up, and it's great. I love it. I love it. Um, you know, I, you know it, it just takes one person, you know. One person might turn into two, might turn into three, and then it turns into 30, and then it turns into 40, you know. So I hope that really does play out. And, you know, people do decide to come into town and voice their concerns and not be afraid to voice their concerns because that's what the problem is. A lot of people are afraid because they're afraid of, you know, what's going to happen to them community wise. So, which shouldn't be the case. You should be able to voice your opinion no matter what. Um, if you don't think something was done right, you should be able to say, hey, this wasn't done right. You know, this is what I think. But, I don't know. It, it's confusing to me, but, uh, you know, I do get how some people think. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't give a crap. Um, you know who I am. Um, you know why I'm here. Uh, I'm sure I've got signs hanging all around the freaking derailment zone. Do not let this person close to this so you can't film. Um, you know, I know, um, I had gave, uh, a local attorney is, uh, permission to use my videos or still shots or anything off my channel that he needs to, um, help him put his case together for this community. So, uh, I told him, take whatever you want. Uh, you'll, I probably got the most coverage, you know, that you'll probably see. Well, at least as I've seen. Maybe there's more out there, but, you know, I told him, take whatever you want. Take videos, take still shots. I don't care. You know, it's all yours to take. If it, if it will help you out, take it. So um, I'm ho I hope that gets passed on through the other four um, attorneys. Uh, you know, I don't want nothing in return for it. It's out there. It's public. You know, you can use it. If it helps you, use it. So I, I was glad to hear back from them. Um, so at least I know, you know, that was my whole point of documenting this every day. You know, like I said, there's so many videos that I take and I don't put out because it's just this, it seems like it's just the same old stuff. Maybe, you know, this thing maybe, maybe moved to maybe what, you know, 300 yards this way or they're doing something different here. I just did it just as a documentation thing as what they're doing. I don't release every one of my videos um, on YouTube. I have so many videos that I just take just for my, you know, just for me to use to see what changes from day to day. Because I know you guys don't want to watch the same old crap. Um, so I was glad to see that they put out that. And he said he will look through the videos and, you know, get what he needs. So. Uh, I hope that helps the town greatly. Um, I don't know. Like I said, I wish they would have put out this um, council meeting. Uh, the minutes from it, the record, the last one was put out was Feb February thirteenth, and it was just it was just right after it happened. So, um, so I want to see what they all talked about. So I'll go to the next one definitely for sure, and to like I said, just to sit in. Um, if they let me, um, you know, I'm not gonna be rude. I'm not gonna be disruptive. You know, I'm 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 not that way. I just want to hear what is talked about um, at this meeting, and you know, I encourage more residents to maybe to come to this meeting and you know show that you know voice your concerns or demand answers or something. So, uh. We have like a total influx of EPA now in town. Uh, they're pretty much taking over everything in town, which you know kind of makes you think: is it actually worse than what they're saying? You know, they're in it for the long haul. So um, I do believe they started moving uh, soil again today. Uh, I think they did. They were supposed to. Um, I think that's about it. I think as long as I'm about to shove in this video, geez, 40 minutes, fuck. Dang it. I tried to make this non-swearing video. Um, I tried to make this not 
make this long, but um, I'll keep you guys up to date. I will be out and about tomorrow um, and getting maybe some new footage or you know something different. Like I said, if they're moving them, I'll get that. Uh, but that all depends if the judge put the order through for them not to destroy evidence. So, all right, guys. Thank you um, for all you guys that, you know, put up with me and watch my live stream and, you know, all that. I think that's it. I think I'm done. Um, I'm going to sit down and relax and get ready for tomorrow. So, I was, tomorrow's Wednesday, isn't it? Yeah, tomorrow's Wednesday. Okay. So, I will check in with you guys tomorrow. Um, it, it may be li maybe a live stream, but probably will be video if I'm down in that valley because, or Negley, because that is like the ghost zone for cell phone signal. Um, sometimes you get it really good, and other times it's just total dead zone. So I'll just record down there, and I'll just post a video down there, post it of that. It's because, so you guys don't have to deal with the buffering, and then, you know, not be able to see what's going on, and it makes it easier. So I will update you guys tomorrow on what's going on, but other than that, um... Not really much change besides, you know, we become infiltrated by the EPA. Um, which, you know, would be a good thing if they actually tested for what they were should be testing for. But it's nice to know that we, I, I've seen some local, uh, local uh, people from various universities coming and actually testing the soil themselves and their tests what they come back with is way different than what the you know EPA is saying. So um, they're probably actually testing for dioxins. That's probably why um, they say the soil is extremely contaminated. Was there, what was their exact words? Um, now it may, may not be everywhere, but you know, wherever they took their samples from, it showed high concentrations. So I like to see, I, I love seeing, you know, independent people get out here. I know it's expensive to do that. But, you know, these people care enough to come out and, you know, get the samples and, you know, test them and release their uh, findings. So that's great. All right, guys, have a good night. I will talk to you guys tomorrow.